So in my next installment of casting cork, I just want to quickly talk about the hooks. Uh, besides the cork, which I talked about last time, the hook is probably the second most important part. But it may not be as important, or the specifics may not be as important as you think. So on the left here, I have three specific popper hooks. They have the little bend in them, so that when you sit the popper on top of it, when you cut them, you sit it on top of it, that little channel right there prevents the hook from turning like this inside the popper after, you, after you've got it all assembled. I have never actually had that happen. And I'm sure it can happen, but if you super glue them in like I do, the thing that happens before that will ever happen is the cork just pulls away. So, these are definitely not essential, these, these, these popper hooks in my experience. And again, if we're going for trying to make these as cheap as possible, this is probably not your cheapest option. That being said, if you do want to buy them, the cheapest option for these particular kind of popper hooks with the bend in them that doesn't allow them to spin are these lightning strike ones from Bass Pro. They're definitely the cheapest ones I've found. I think they're six bucks for a box, for a package of 10, excuse me. And that is as cheap as you're going to get. They make them in both salt water and uh, regular like freshwater sizes. Uh, the freshwater ones come in sizes one and sizes four, I believe, and the saltwater guns come in two and O2, two, two O, excuse me. I would skip the freshwater ones completely. I think that they're really thin, and you know, if you're going for small fish, they might be okay, but this is a bit, pretty big hook designed for a pretty big popper, and that is just not gonna hold up in, in my in my in my experience anyways the saltwater ones are pretty good though these are forged they seem to last pretty well this is a 2o and this is a size 2 and both of these are great uh, the 2o works great within a size 8 and the size uh, 2 here is a little bit small for the 6 so it might work better for like a 5 or a 4 size popper but it'll work and then for the little guys uh, I don't this is again this is the size 1 right here the size four is still too big for these. I don't like. I don't like it for the size twos. So, again, I don't really think that these are necessary. So here are just some regular long shank J hooks on the left here. I have used these forever. These 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 three particular kinds. Um, I really like these Eagle Claw cheapies. I bought these uh, at a discount place called Martin's in Maine, which is fantastic. And I bought five of these, 75 hooks times five. They're 50 cents a package there. But even still, this is still only a couple bucks for this whole thing of hooks. A whole bunch of different sizes. This is the biggest size that comes in the package, which is great for these size two poppers. But I use these hooks for little streamers of all different types for flies, like gray ghosts and, that, and little zonkers, that kind of thing. And these work great. I've never had them turn and they don't bend. And, and if you, you know, it's all part of cutting down on the cost. I mean, these cost virtually nothing, practically. 75 for 50 cents. I mean, that's pretty, pretty much nothing. The next hook down are these Eagle Claw XBG hooks. Uh, they have these little barbs on them. Again, I don't care. Uh, they were they were discounted. They were fifty cents. I'm sure you could find deals like this in places like eBay. I would look for you know long shank hooks like this, and these work great for the size uh, six poppers right here. The last hook at the bottom is an actual saltwater grade hook. This is a five o ten for three dollars and sixty nine cents. All right, if you go to the fly shop and buy these, that's ten twelve bucks anyways. So, and these are great. They're, they're plenty strong enough. Like this is, this is striper grade. I mean, is it 50 pound striper grade? Uh, probably not. Is it going to hold up to a 20 pounder? Yeah, I think so. And I think you're going to break your leader and your tippet long before you bend this hook. So again, you just want to make sure that they're long enough that when you set the popper on the hook, that you have plenty of space at the end here to tie on feathers. That's it. I just wanted to pause this and add that by space at the back of the hook, I mean, you want a little bit of straight before the bend. Uh, you do not want to be tying the feathers onto the bend or they end up pointing down 
a lot. Like in the first video I showed you that popper that the feathers pointed down, or the bucktail I should say, and I said it ruined it. That's what you don't want. You need some straight behind the popper that you can tie the feathers so that they stick out behind it straight. You don't need anything else besides that. So as long as it's strong enough and you're going to super glue it in, you don't need these special popper hooks. Are they, you know, will they hold it better? Probably. Does it make any difference? I, I don't really think so. Not, not in the real world. Um, not in my experience. I think if they, if they were to, you know, something like this would have turned, you would probably end up bending it before that happened with a super glue. So hooks, important, obviously, but mostly just, you know, use what you think will work. You don't need something specific. Don't, you know, you don't have to worry about going down to the fly shop and spending a bunch of money on something special. You know, these are all cheapy hooks that work absolutely fantastic for the poppers.